Hi, good evening, everybody. Today was the fourth set of announcements by the Honorable Finance Minister, and uh, this was the fourth press conference. And a lot of focus today was on uh, defense, uh, aerospace, uh, some bit on atomic energy, and uh, a lot on minerals and coal. So I'll take you through it. However, I think the overall feeling that is coming is that this is more like a budget discussion and not so much like a short term covid handling kind of a distress economic stimulus plan but uh, let's dive into it and let's discuss a few factors today i want to make it very informative so whatever steps the government is taking for any you know sector or any provision i'm going to explain those provisions to you so beginning with coal the first one was coal in coal the government is saying that they are so these are the sectors today on which we are going to talk about structural reforms announced by government and coal mineral defense production civil aviation discom in union territories uh, social infrastructure projects and space and atomic energy did you know a fun fact is that only 60% of the aerospace of the country is used for commercial aircraft you know maneuvering so 40% uh, of the space is strategic and not used for aircrafts you know aerospace is not used for commercial flights because this is generally military or air force areas and um, there's some steps that are taken to increase efficiency there and in improve or in increase the area in which uh, the air travel can happen and your flight to maybe any city uh, in the next few days whenever the flights start that's also a question today whenever the flights start and that will be soon uh your distance the time taken could be lesser because some efficiency may have come into the route taken from a to b right now i think the routes are not very very efficient uh, with this the routes could become a little efficient i'll discuss them one by one um coal sector commercial mining has been announced so right now as you know coal as a whole is a very government controlled sector and uh, in india and uh, commercial mining is being announced the revenue share model versus fixed price so revenue share is being encouraged 50 blocks will be made available immediately and bidding process for exploration for under exploration blocks will also happen so you know right three processes exploration mining and production so exploration is when you find that particular mineral or at a particular place and then you mine it and then you produce it process it and then you sell it so Uh, even under exploration blocks where it is less certain that coal is available that will also be auctioned now rather than just you know uh, auctioning fully explored blocks till now production uh, before schedule if somebody does will be incentivized gasification of coal which is environmental friendly will be incentivized and infrastructure development with uh, you know uh, by development of conveyor belts at various coal mines so that coal can move from the coal bed to the railway racks in a much more efficient way so just to explain you the supply chain of coal there is a coal mine there is a coal head which is the top of the coal mine and then in the coal travels from the coal mine to the railway racks through trucks generally so that is you know being automated through conveyor belts and 50000 crores is going to be spent and there is a, a a humongous target of 1 billion tons of coal uh, which is the uh, coal india limited target to produce 1 billion tons of coal by 2023 24 this will be of great use to that then coal bed methane extraction rights will also be auctioned till now that was not being done mining plan will be simplified the minister said the mining plan will be so simple that it can be uploaded and downloadable from our website and uh, that was not the case till now and some commercial concessions which are not a major point but will be given to non power consumers who are using coal for non power purposes some 5000 crores will go towards that it will include lower prices and also higher credit periods you know to these non power sectors Sec now we come to minerals now as you see now the government is going for seamless composite exploration come mining come production regime where where you know they will consider all exploration mining and production together and uh, just to give you an example uh, for aluminium bauxite and coal mineral blocks will be auctioned jointly 
and any what bidding will be bidding for both and that will you know bring in more efficiencies 500 mining blocks will be offered in open auction and uh, captive and non captive mine distinction will go away which means that mines can be transferred the leases can be transferred and surplus and used material from a particular mine can be sold so right now if you have leased a mine and you don't want to mine it then it's of no use you can't transfer the lease so this and if you have extracted some mineral it's lying there you can't sell it so it this will allow transfer of mine and surplus material being used so this will be overall you know efficient for the industry then the, the ministry is also making some mineral indices uh, for several minerals and these are basically you know tracking the price movements like there is um, index for housing right you know residential index is there so this will track and then there is a small measure on rationalization of stamp duty at the time of awarding the leases so this is okay defense production uh, one big point there is point number 3 fdi limit today has been increased from 49% to 74% uh, there is a list of weapons that the government wants to stop import of and um, manufacture them here under make in india and uh, the list of those weapons and spare parts will be done domestically and there is a procurement timeline for gradual elimination of you know imports in those weapons so make in india push and uh, then there is this ordnance factory board now this these are various ordnance factories as you may see in various places like in delhi there is in delhi kand these are you know the warehouses where weapons are kept so corporatization not privatization so the according to government they are not running efficiently so more processes and procedures will be brought in to corporatize ordnance factory boards so that they run more efficiently and then uh, they mentioned about trying time bound defense procurement processes with setting up of project management units quality requirements being met and you know various procedures for trials and testing so these were measures in the defense sector civil aviation as we mentioned you know 60% of airspace is currently available for flights more will be available now and uh, your flights will be shorter uh, for some routes some routes which are efficient already they will not be shorter and this will benefit both the environment uh, lead to lesser consumption of fuel in turn benefiting the aviation industry and six new airports have uh, been identified for the second round of auction by aai airport authority of india and the first out of the first six airports identified three have been operationalized and out of these 12 airports uh, for round 16 and round 26 uh, government is expecting 13000 crores of private money flowing into the sector uh, again uh, one interesting point that uh, the minister mentioned was on maintenance repair and overhaul hub um, so india has everything india has capital india has manpower india has the technical know how and india is ready to be a maintenance repair and overhaul uh, you know hub now what is this is that where you know airlines across the world send their aircrafts for repair that's a mro and currently the sector is just 800 crores in india and they want to grow it to 2000 crores in 3 years and they want to convert civil and defense together so that economies of scale is there so we will become a maintenance repair and overall hub and uh, some measures were announced in budget also towards taxation so that you know we we uh, uh, companies are incentivized to do mro business in india then discoms in union territories you know we 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 we, we discussed discoms you know 90000 crores going to discoms in the previous measures because uh, they had to pay power generators if you remember against the receivables consumer receivables now in union territories they are saying that we are going to privatize the discoms and there will be a tariff policy so that consumer interests are not hurt the consumers don't suffer and also there is a operational and financial efficiencies come in and all the union territories are going to have private discounts going forward social infrastructure projects and it has a term called viability gap funding i'll explain to you that don't be bogged down by the terms uh, social infrastructure projects include you know benefit uh, citizen benefit projects like schools hospitals etc so earlier what used to happen was they were always funded 20 80 20% coming from center and 80% coming from state 
for schools and hospitals the government has you know increased the limit to 30% and 30 will come from the center and 70 will come from the state so this 8100 crores is that you know increased 10% from the center last but not the least space and atomic energy so isro has done well for the country we all know that and there are a lot of satellites that we have launched and there's a lot of data that isro collects and a lot of data that our tech entrepreneurs you know try to buy from outside uh, so we are going to have new uh, processes and new provisions where in, you know this remote sensing data geospatial data can be provided to tech entrepreneurs by our own space agency and private sectors will also be able to use uh, infrastructure and assets of isro and uh, participate in future planetary explorations so that's very interesting in atomic energy also they discussed you know setting up of research reactor to produce medical isotopes the medical isotopes as you know are you know used in cancer research and cancer treatment and also for irradiation technology you know and uh, for food preservation so any you know perishable food item which is there can be preserved and shelf life can be improved through irradiation technology and this is also being targeted in a ppp mode also they want to you know link up indian startup ecosystem with the nuclear sectors through technology development and incubation centers so that you know sensitive projects can be built along with tech entrepreneurs hope this was helpful and i think we got a few interesting uh, terms today and we understood a few new terms today hope this was good uh, to tomorrow speech is going to be at 11 am so i'll be coming back to you the around afternoon time with uh, i think that may be one of the last speeches we never know if there are more uh, you know measures to be covered in the future but uh, i'll come to you around 1 or 2 o'clock tomorrow with a new video hope you're doing good and if you're learning something don't forget to press like and subscribe subscribe you know tab will come here sorry not there and you can subscribe to my channel thanks a lot for watching and i hope you are having a good weekend and staying safe at home Bye